inspiration of Clarissa Burt, founder of In the Limelight Media. I'm your show host, Chrissy Cordingly. You'll be able to see this interview on In the Limelight TV, which is distributed on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and 100 other smart TV apps. The audio version of this interview can also be heard wherever you listen to your podcasts. And today I'm really excited to be interviewing Beth Lynch, intuitive consultant, medium, and founder of In Their Light Teaching. Beth understands the importance of balancing life with a spiritual practice, motherhood, and career. Through channeling and teaching, she is committed to helping others dealing or deal with grief and convey the wisdom of the spirit world. She's a graduate of Delphi University and has been practicing meditation over 20 years. And she's been featured on numerous radio shows nationwide. Beth founded Inner Light Teaching in 1998. She volunteers in a community teaching meditation and sharing the wisdom she has learned through her own experience. Experiences. So welcome, Beth. Very thrilled to have you on today. Oh, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Of course. So I would actually love for you to start just by introducing yourself. Share for the audience what a medium is, how you recognize your gifts and what led you into this type of practice. It's one of my favorite questions because, <laughs> you know, I think like many people as a child, I felt very, I was very sensitive, probably called oversensitive, over emotional. I'd cry at the drop of a hat. I could feel things. If someone was angry, it almost was like, um, I, I now can compare it to like an electrical shock. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time that was, it was more an anxiety actually, but I didn't, you know, at this point in my life at 63, I don't think they really called it anxiety back then when you, we were six and five and 10, all that little radius there where I would always feel, and I would see things and some things were not very nice things. So I was scared. My upbringing was um, traditionally Catholic. So I always had faith. Mm -hmm. um, I believed in Jesus listened and, and I had that with me. So it was a go-to place for me, even as a child, just to believe that I was protected and angels were real and that helped me through. But then, you know, you fast forward to your teens and there's a lot of suppression that can go on. <laughs> you don't have to feel, you know, and, um, and back then this is different now, but that back then it was simple ways. Um, but you know, then the, the death stuff started happening around me, family members, feeling things. Think of someone a few days later, you hear they died. I could, that confused me. And then my dad's passing. I remember for about a week, I kept just feeling death. I didn't know why I was feeling death. I didn't even know what death felt like. Um, but I knew I was feeling it. So I actually thought I was being told I was going to die. So I decided that I said to a friend on Saturday night, when we were out, I said, I think I'm going to go talk to a priest Monday because uh, I feel death. And I don't know what that means. And she goes, oh, my God. And I go, I, you know, and they didn't get it. Nobody got it, you know. And um, and um, that Monday morning, my dad passed away, a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. So then three weeks later, I remember she asked me, do you ever get those feelings anymore? And I go, what feelings? And I didn't. So I was like, wow. And then a few years later, my mom passed. And then that was a very big opening because the night of her passing, I it's just all on my bio, too, so I won't go overly, but. No, she, please share. It's a, it's a fascinating uh, story. Please I, share. I, I love dreamt. You. I woke up from a dream. I was hearing over an intercom system that she was dead and the walls were gray and I could see people going. And I, in the dream, started screaming and crying. And so then I, you know, I woke myself up, I guess. And I looked at the clock and it was digital 3.15 AM. And I went, whoa, what a dream was that, you know? And I was very shook up. I was like sweaty. And I'm like, I don't know how I went back to sleep. I think it was a divine knockout or something because I went back to sleep, but I woke up in the morning, not thinking of the dream. I had my little nephew and I had to get him off to daycare that morning. And so I wasn't really uh, prepped for, you know, I thinking I had to do that, you know, 7 AM. And so I get up and I'm doing that and I get in the car and I turn on the car radio and he's in the back and I remember it's on the news that the train Amtrak crashed in the middle of the night and the crews were just getting to the scene and I'm like what and I knew my mom was on a train so I'm like my dream oh my god so now I'm in this da -da 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 mode and I get my little guy off to 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 his school and I run call my sister I said something's going on I go to the Amtrak station that happened to be right in between the daycare and her house and uh I asked them, you know, listen, my mom was on the train and what do I do? I don't even know where to begin. And there were not cell phones then. <laughs> we didn't have cell phones 30 something years ago. At least I didn't. And yeah, and they gave me a phone number 
So it took quite a while to hear back, but in the car, I actually heard her voice tell me, I'm okay. I'm happy. Well, I'm thinking, well, who the heck says they're happy when they're dead, lack of a better word. And uh, yeah, that kicked me into, you know, anger, God, why are we even here? This has got to be H-E-L-L. You know what I mean? This is all grief. Grief is a one of the hardest emotions we have to experience as a human. And the grief just, you know, encompasses everything you're doing, you know? And so then I went to a medium a year later, just by choice, chance, my sister's friend called her and said, I can't make my appointment. You and your sister go take it. And we decided to go and right sitting in her room. That was where it all changed. She looked at me and said, young lady, you're not using your gifts and abilities. And someday you're going to do what I do. And I'm looking at her like, is she crazy? And I'm not, you know, and then, you know, it's like, but then our mother was there. My, your mother will guide you to your books and teachers. And then everything in that session just totally changed. We knew she was there. You know, we knew we felt her, we felt the emotions that we were feeling were transforming, but anyway, you still got to leave and apply it. And so, but I did, I left, I started reading more about meditation. I was just drawn. I was always curious about it. I did yoga mm -hmm. a lot, but I never realized what it really was, you know? And so the, that's where that journey really began. And I was 32 when that happened. So, but you know, what was interesting, Chrissy, is I always lived my life. Like I was going to die at 32. I lived my, I had this feeling my whole life. I would not pass 32. And I think, why do I have to feel that? Then you put it away. And my mother died when I was 32. So a part of me died, but that was like a weaker. But it, that's what I was just going to say. That's also what changed your path completely. It it's was definitely your life so did end, but it mm -hmm. also began, which I it think began. Beautiful. And now I, you know, I, I, you know, when Delphi is a beautiful school in the Georgia mountains and you don't really go learn to be a medium, you learn about healing. You learn about spirituality. What is spirit what is where does god fit in or, or divine power or a higher divine intelligence where does it all fit and it all just starts because we already know this in our consciousness and an aspect of who we are that higher self and so it all the pieces just fell into place mm -hmm. and little did i know the ability and the sensitivity was getting stronger but i also was not overwhelmed by the energy around me anymore and that's where i feel when i evolved and allowed and started, you know, you know, put down the hairdressing scissors and surrendered to it. And I guess exactly what I did. Um, it was amazing to see now 28 years I've been doing the work and writing books on it. And I just, it makes life easier, but it doesn't make, it doesn't mean it's always easy, it, but it moves us through the hardest things, which are grief, you know, uh, life-changing things that can create you know, mental and emotional challenges and people like sometimes the everyday things that are overwhelming, it, it falls into place. It all mm -hmm. falls into to a, it just makes everything make sense. Like I don't ask why ever for anything that goes on. No, yes. I like, that's, that's the best, I think, attitude to have. I think humans naturally are uh, afraid of uncertainty so we try to place answers or fit you know squares into you know circle pegs that kind of thing mm -hmm. but there is a beauty also to uncertainty and to me I call it wonder and I always try to foster a sense of wonder every day and it it helps me believe that there's more than meets the eye and I find that very comforting actually where a lot of people would find that uncomfortable mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there, you look at it all through, you know, Nikola Tesla, my most favorite, when I read this quote, I don't know how long ago it was, quite a few years now, but if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, you have to think in terms of energy, vibration, and frequency, mm -hmm. because every single emotion is a frequency. We are running that. We are an intelligence behind this beautiful law of attraction. We are the intelligence behind it. It will be working no matter what frequency what emo our emotions will be measuring that but our intelligence our perspective the way we look at things whether we're going through grief life changes uh, wonder wonder is a frequency you're lifting your frequency every day Absolutely. you know that's so it's not meant to be a secret <laughs> <laughs> Tesla's quote is the best it's not meant to be a secret you know 
Um, yeah, there's so many interesting theories too. I actually, it was my doctor is funny. She's a scientist, but she's a doctor. And she was sharing with me the other day about how, because we were, as I approach 50, right? I don't know, 50 is kind of a year where you're like, I'm down the hill, right? Like we're, mm -hmm. we start to really <laughs> understand our mortality in a very personal way, right? So there's that, again, that uncertainty, the acceptance and the wonder of what will this be like when that day finally comes. And she was saying she had read a book and I, maybe you've heard of it and I don't remember the book is I'll try and find it, but uh, to tell you later, but she said what she really liked about the theory in this book was that perhaps this is our caterpillar stage. And the reason why as we get older and smaller and tighter and more hard to move and more closed in is actually because we're creating a cocoon and then death is when we set free. And I thought that was really beautiful. I thought that was a really beautiful way to look at things and understand the progression of life because it, it's, it can be confusing as we get older, right? When we're young, everything's fun and great, but then our friends and family start dying and accidents happen and bad things mm. happen. And we go, I didn't sign up for this. I signed up for, you know, laughter and beauty, but there's, but that can only come with also those moments too. So absolutely. Um, yeah. So how can you, so how can these spiritual practices affect uh, mental and emotional wellness? Because really it's about our health. We have to live here healthy today. We still have a human body that we need to live in. How does uh, embracing that spiritual practice help mm -hmm. with our health? I love this question. Mm -hmm. I can, and I, I came to a place where I finally understood what the spirit meant. And this is how I define it. And through what I've experienced personally and, and in channelings over the years and teachings. But when we understand consciousness and the spiritual essence of who we are, right? It The spirit holds the intuitive nature. Well, intuition is not just talking to spirit and deja vu. It's survival. It's an inner compass to guide us. No, oh, I don't know. That just doesn't feel right. That position feels mm -hmm. better. That's the job I'm going to accept. You know, anything, everything. So you got your intuitive nature, your creative nature, which is your the way you're going to um, uh, create abundance in your life and, you know, enjoy and wake up and be creative and expressive. Then you got your, so you got your intuition, your creativity, your compassion beyond the physical ability for yourself and then that rolls out to others because people are hard on themselves. They don't even love themselves. I have so many people sit with me and it's like, I don't love myself. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, no, no, no. We're changing that. Yes, you do. But that's a, a frequency. So, okay. So then we go into that, but so you got compassion, then you got the communicative, you know, how we communicate. We have an inner dialogue going on every second. People say to me all the time, especially when they're going to learn meditation. Well, I can't stop thinking. And I'm like, well, you're not meant to. <laughs> don't stop. I don't know what you'll be if you stop. But I used to say that two eons ago before I meditated. Meditation is mediation between what we think and how we respond emotionally. Keep it simple. So now you got your, how you're going to communicate your inner dialogue, which is going to affect how you communicate in every relationship you're in. And then that connection to oneness is there or the higher, or whatever word you want to call it. Some people don't want it to be, um, you know, God or divine, they like the word higher, more of in a higher frequency or, you know, it's fine. It's not wrong. It, it is what it is. It's still frequency. And then also the big one in there too, that I missed is the coping. Mm -hmm. Our coping is in our spiritual nature. So when you have this nature, this natural essence of who you are, that fills you with intuitive and the trust and the creativity and how you communicate and you get exempt from that, or you deny it, or you've never been taught it, some kind of form of it, it's in nature. It's in nature. Nature is the most powerful connection to our higher self, divine energy that it exists, but also is in our heart chakra. Ooh, let's go chakras, right? So if we are exempt from that, we're going to be depressed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, most people aren't exempt from all of them, you know? So there's different, so many different levels of that you know, and then you have to be aware of the suppression of those things. And also another thing that they've shown me about anxiety, anxiety is actually, according to the spirit world, there may be medical people that will deny or think this doesn't make sense, but I respect both sides. And I, I totally do. But what I have learned is when the energy field is trying to balance, 
align itself to its natural frequency, which is higher than most are walking around in, the nervous system is responding and that, then that sends the signal. So some people shut down, get, you know, da, da, da. there's so many different, everyone responds to anxiety differently. But the main thing to understand is if you look at it as not something that's happening to you because you're sick, mm-hmm. okay, same thing with depression, according to the spirit world, with all due respect. Um, and you look at it as something that you're being shown needs to be taken care of, to be nurtured, to be healed. Then you look at energy, vibration, and frequency about the things. We don't erase what went on back there. Some people have gone through trauma. You know what I mean? Some PTSD is a big one. I've worked with many people with that, with meditation. According to the spirit world, what happens with PTSD is that the needle stuck on the record. So Mm -hmm. the emotional shock that they went through in trauma, whether it's one time or their whole childhood, their energy doesn't measure in time, it is stuck. So you have to get the frequency up. There's only one way to do that. Intention. Some people have to be taught it, learn it. I found out through the death of both parents very young, you know, everybody's going to find it their way. So that's where the mental wellness, understanding mental is mind then emotional is your feelings we have to claim the power of that divine right to be in charge of our thoughts and emotions and if you still can be why are we washing that away and surrendering it to something else Mm -hmm. because you know there are people who aren't no it is definitely healing can be an uncomfortable process but my gosh it's the most rewarding thing in the world when you finally break free and and the growth that you experience from it and there you know the science side definitely lines up with the spirit side because in the brain itself when you experience trauma there are neural pathways that are formed that get you to expect pain and grief and it does create a broken loop literally in our brains Mm -hmm. and through meditation and connecting with source and reminding ourselves that we are natural we we've surrounded ourselves with buildings and technology so sometimes we forget we're as natural as the grass and the trees we are meant to be here and we are part Part of the ecosystem and when we can do that we can create more neural pathways again so it's connecting mm. to spirit but it's actually working scientifically in our brain too that they line up so well together and they make so much sense which is also why so many people experience physical symptoms right when they're when they're in trauma or grief right mm. so headaches and chest aches and stuff again it's it's all connected which is yeah. which is really fascinating so you're really helping a lot of people with the work that you're doing and you mentioned this a little bit about positions, like looking for a work position. So, I mean, we don't, I, <laughs> I've worked in the corporate world for a long time and talking about spirituality and the spirit world is not always common water cooler topic, but mm-hmm. it can help us professionally as well. Can you share a little bit about how being connected to spirit helps us on a professional level? Oh my gosh, absolutely. You know, it- when you think of it in terms of like, you know, whether you're in a corporate world, your creative energy has to be in there. You're in what you've learned, what you've gotten yourself to creatively. Now you're going to take it, the knowledge and be creative with it, you know, or, you know, just even endurance, like having the energy to, you know, the mind has to constantly be on, on that runs the brain gets tired. It's like doing a bicep curl for three hours, eight hours. Do you hurt? The muscle gets tired. <laughs> you know, it's why the, it then starts unwiring and re overwiring and all that. So when you look at it so simply, like how it helps intelligence I've done, I ran a meditation program in, in, a, in a high school in my community for five years. And when I tell you these kids would come in, sometimes all they had was 10 minutes, 15 minutes, some could stay the whole period. And they would come in and we would just do breathing and the lights were low and you know and just watching them you know say god i was so anxious when i came in and i'm gonna go ace that test now mrs lynch and i feel so much clearer and better and little things like that you know just coming out of these kids and you know having a tournament and the team comes in and they all get their breathing in and then they win you know they win states and they come in the meditation wait what (laughs) mrs lynch i can't take credit but they were given a tool to cope with the stress yes to cope with the anxiety that can come with the pressure and in in the whole thing that goes and you're also given the strength to cope and understand sportsmanship and Mm -hmm. 
and, you know, I mean, and just getting along in the, at the water cooler, you know, when people say, well, my coworkers, I love my job, but my coworkers are so negative. I go, no, think of it this way. Your coworkers are negate of light. Their frequency is lower than yours. Pat yourself on the back, <laughs> send some positive thoughts, stop the inner dialogue that is so negative light that now you're bouncing off each other with ping pong balls, like hitting your foreheads or something because you're feeling it. And I've had people say, you know what? I changed my thought process. And in one week, I actually like that girl next to me now. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's the magic will be out in the real world, not in the meditation time. Usually it's going to be out in the real world. It doesn't take long. So it can help you in any situation. To build that resilience. Absolutely. And I know negativity seems so contagious because negativity seems to be a lot louder than positivity and higher frequency, but it is high frequency and uh, love and empathy is honestly just as if not more contagious than negativity. It's just a much softer touch. So I think when you, when you become that leader in the spot and you show the grace, uh, it quickly starts to follow around you, which is really cool. It's amazing, isn't it? And it is a positive charger. You know, like when I was a child and I'd feel that, you know, I I was raised with, you know, my beautiful Italian family, 50 people over for the holidays. They're all talking and here's me, you know, but they weren't (laughs) doing anything wrong. They were just being passionate and, you know, nothing gets to tell you now because I was raised that way. So I love them all. But it did, it it hit me funny. Like I I was overwhelmed Mm -hmm. because I didn't know what to do with that, you know? And so when, when you're given these understandings, it's like, when you give them to a child, they apply them, they apply them. Yes. And they have, they're magical to watch. It is. It's uh, my oldest child has sensory processing disorder. So I mentioned to you before we start talking, they are quite sensitive. So they can't take in a lot of stimulus at once because it just, it's everything is in stereo for them. It's like a 3D movie and it's, it's a gift, but it can be very uncomfortable, especially if they're around people that don't understand why they have to have headphones on with light music in loud or large environments. Right. But when you honor their needs, holy crow, can they perform and do exactly, even though it may not look like the typical person, Mm -hmm. you know, work habits or study habits, when you allow them to self soothe and use the tools that work for them, even if it looks non-traditional, they get so much done and they're so much happier. Like just let people be what they need to be. That's so important. And the youth, they, they, they're they so, between the ages of six and 12, you're processing your own emotional responses. People don't realize that. Like conception to, to about five energetic, through energy medicine is this root chakra sense of security, foundation. And then, you know, then you move up to the second area chakra, emotional response. And then the th- Third is the solar plexus. That's how you're going to embrace that power based on those two foundations. Well, if those two foundations are rocking, you know, they could be perfect if, if there's such a word, but there's still the way a person, child processes it still has to be acknowledged. And uh, that's beautiful what you said. I really love that. Oh, thank you. I never thought of that, of seeing them, you know, with their headphones on and, you know, are they, no, that that's probably more times than not, it is their way of not being overstimulated. God, I love that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, they're they're a pretty cool kid. And uh, and you're pretty cool too. So yeah, I would love to hear about your book. So you your latest book, Life, Death, and In Between. Can you share a little bit about the book? What caused you to write it? What are you hoping will come out of the book? Mm -hmm. You know, the title was interesting and I had done the summit a couple years ago and Mm -hmm. um, the book was never finished in in the time frame. I thought, so it's kind of interesting, the timing of it now and found you through, you know, something, but anyways, the, you know, it's life, death, and in between basically through death, I learned more about life and then all the in between made sense. So that's where the title really comes, but it, it's probably based on the 28 years of what I've experienced in my personal healing journey sessions that I've done. Um, and some of the awareness that comes from that, um, and just teaching about, you know, understanding the law of attraction and, you know, we hear the term a lot, but do people really know what it means? Do you, do you respect it and honor that law? Because it's working, whether you want to be negative charge or positive charge, it's, it's giving you what you are. And so the ways to understand, you know, that the, um, the emotional, a wellness of that, you know, and, and how it affects everything in our life. There's nothing exempt from 
the law or from spirituality, spiritual reality, I call it sometimes. It's a reality. It's who we are. We want to be intuitive and creative and communicate and we want to cope and we want to have compassion and we want a connection to something bigger than this crazy world. So why do we want to turn that off, turn it down or ignore it or deny it? Because that will make us sick. And don't you love in the word health? I don't know about you, but it wasn't it was just a matter of years ago where I looked at the word once when I was putting together a workshop and I went, well, heal is in the word health, like, duh. <laughs> and I remember I had this moment and I went, I never noticed that before. Heal is in health. <laughs> like we kind of give it a negative in a way, you know, oh, our health and everybody's health and mental, emotional, physical health, but heal is in health. So we got to look at it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, or even healing, like, oh, you were broken? No, this is a natural human process, natural right? Process we are built day. to heal and grow and transform. Yes, yeah. that transform. It's you know, we have evolved. This is a quote and it's in my book. And and one time I remember asking why is the world the way it is? It was a while ago I did this. And I remember the next day, and I had my little inner dialogue up to the universe, whoever listens, I always say powers that be. And I remember the next day doing the dishes and just kind of my hands were in the water. And I was just looking out at some trees out the window. And I heard you have evolved as a species technically, but not spiritually. Mm -hmm. And I remember going, well, I knew my brain didn't think that somebody bigger <laughs> than me that brought that message. I'm like, well, yeah, what, what's that mean? I'm like, oh, my question yesterday, why is the world like seem to be snapping and crazy. And then I heard, I go, well, okay. And here's me. Okay. I get that. I get that quote. I'm feeling it, but I don't really like it. <laughs> I didn't like the answer. So I kind of said it. I mean, that's what, and I heard back. It is not a punishment. Is it? A, it is a consequence. Mm -hmm. And that's what earth is for. And this peace came into me that I had, and it didn't change. It just went, oh, I get it. So a lot of people look at things in life as a punishment or karma. Even the word karma is given as a negative sometimes. Oh, karma. Karma is a good thing too. We got to look at both sides of that. <laughs> oh, good karma. But, so anyway, everything like that is in the book. It's just, I, I hope a little way to let people see, oh yeah. Yeah. Cause when you read something that resonates to your Nate, to your, it lifts your frequency you know, and that's what I hope the book does. Um, lifts, lets people get that connection to their true understanding of that. There's nothing in the book they probably don't know. You know, I mean, we all know this higher understanding. It's what we're doing. Is it turned up, turned down? You know, the switch off the handle. I don't know. I get a lot of metaphors when I talk. So I, <laughs> I give them everything. And, uh, but yeah, and it is available on Audible for those, you know, don't like to read. I have mm -hmm. it on Audible now and I recorded it myself. So I'm very happy about that. And it's on That's iTunes. Awesome. Yeah, because sometimes listening is, you know, I love to listen to audiobooks all the time. I, I'm a better listener than reader because I get tired when I read. And, and I, you know, with that, very intuitive people usually have, you know, the ADD because we feel and we we go ahead and we don't absorb and we're getting the emotion. So I get that now, except they didn't have a name for it when I was a kid, I don't think. But um, but I I went through that, you know, and I can see it easily and meditation helped that immensely. Like it definitely brought it to an easier place. It, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And let's talk a little more about some of the benefits of meditation. So mm -hmm. is, are they quick when you meditate? Is it instant? Is it over time? Is it a practice mm -hmm. that you should be building on a daily basis? How should people, if people were sitting here and like, okay, I, I, I think I want to know a little more about meditation mm -hmm. and where should I get started? What would you say okay. to a new person to this? Um, well, the first of all, understand meditation is mediation between thoughts and emotional responses. We all have the ability to, to do that. And so when you learn, you know, simple things like the breath and really understanding the breath, and here's a cute little breath technique that I absolutely love. Exhale, like you're blowing out a candle and being careful. You don't want the wax to spill, you know, I mean, really. Yeah. And you lengthen it every so often, let your inhale be natural, but you just keep that little candle in mind when you exhale. It's an immediate change on the nervous system, usually 30 seconds to three minutes. The nervous system is going to start responding, okay? 
and allow the thoughts. I always say, put them on a cloud, watch them go, use your imagination, wonder, you know, be, let it be simple or, you know, put it in a, um, a, a, a shelf and then the shelf can be like your divine order shelf. I call it where just shelf it, you know, let it be a file if you want. So keep it simple. Use some, use your imagination. Um, my actually on my website, if you give me your email address and I don't send that out to anyone or do anything like that, it's just for updates on my online classes and everything, but you get a free download for mm -hmm. um, meditation and direction. And it's a cute little moment to just sit and let you clear your mind. So it's very easy to follow, you know, so that's a way if they want to try there. Um, but yeah, just keeping it simple, I think, and knowing that even in its simplicity, that's where its power is. And it is instant. I was talking to a woman today and she has three kids and two of their twins. And when we were on the phone, just conversing about something, the kids, the twins were talking and it was like you're in stereo. They, and she goes, I'm so sorry. I go, no, I go put on Donald's journey. I have a children's, it's on my website. I have a children's CD and, um, or, or MP3. Now I have it in all forms. And it, it's only 12 minutes and it's very simple. And she sent me back a picture when we got off the phone. She goes, so I asked the kids to just, you know, I'm going to put this on. She, she showed a picture, all three of them were laying on the floor hey. and they were, and their arms were like this. And she goes, Beth, they didn't move. Oh. They didn't move for 12 minutes. They didn't move. And when they got <laughs> up, they were much calmer. She goes, what's in that? I go, children. And all it is, is a little journey of going into a tree and what the tree says the energy field responds, the nervous system follows, the magic begins. It is instant. It's just a daily practice will make it more natural for you. And you see it in the sky, you see it in the trees, you see it anywhere, it's there. It's tuning into nature. Absolutely. And it's so powerful. And like I said, it's so contagious, infectious in such a great way. Whenever I meditate or do, you know, yin yoga, restorative yoga, and I'm in my room and I have, you know, my soft lighting and the music and I'm mm -hmm. meditating. It's so interesting because the animals all come in and lay around you. The kids come in and lay on the bed and just sort of relax. Like it's mm -hmm. like, it's just such a calming, inviting environment where everyone just lets, whew, right. So it's and so it's amazing. physical. That is very, the physical changes that can happen so instantly with the breath and with an intention and just allowing your thoughts for a moment. It's just, I mean, I've been practicing it for 28 years and there's sometimes I, I go, well, that was my mind just, just kept on rolling. But I didn't get upset. <laughs> you know, I just knew those thoughts were going and I just keep going, keep going, <sighs> blow my candle that way, you know, kind of have fun with it because the next day I could be, you know, in the presence of my own parents giving me a message. Mm -hmm. you know, and, or getting an idea for something to put together as a class, because you always want to have new ideas and new things to share with people when, you know, and so that inspiration comes in that moment, you know, so you just, it, it hits everything. It hits everything. And, and in your body, it helps it realign and heal and, you know, Absolutely. You, you touched on something about getting ideas. And this is something that I don't think a lot of people realize. And as I started meditating, what I found that I had to sort of switch from doing, you know, deep meditation from nighttime to morning because you, you would think it would make you sleepy, but actually I found that it was sort of activating and the creativity and the thoughts, it was good thoughts that started coming up and all of a sudden there was energy, like purpose starts coming through. So can you oh, share a little bit that. about, about the energizing side of meditation that it's not just about relaxing and falling asleep. It, it's actually a very productive uh, practice as well. Absolutely. I love that. And ah, oh, it's so true. There's one I recorded that's just for focus at, focus, concentration, and, you know, it's not a deep relaxation into the body. And sometimes if I'm, you know, a few sessions in and I know I got another one and I just, I'm starting to feel that little, you know, the drain or, you know, I'll just do this little eight minute one and it taps and it's like, it's like I could start the whole day over. I mean, it's just crazy what a few minutes of just clear tuning in 
if anything else, will bring creative energy out, you know, writer's block, you know, you can, I always look at these people that, you know, these young people, especially like, like Taylor Swift, like watching her speak about my dad, her diary was her first album music, real, musically, right? She was pouring out her heart and her emotions and her sadness and her anger. And, and it took her to places, you know, most people do once in that field. She's been able, she's, she just stands in a, in a, a place of her own, but some people, you know, you watch them, then you see they're depressed and they can't get their second album and it was a flap. Well, you know what? It isn't that what it is, is they're trying to intellectually create their emotion. You know, those emotions that, for example, are put out in pain and in, you know, the people feel that. And it's not like they're supposed to bring them down. It's supposed to stimulate that you can become, you know, healed you know, so it's so interesting when you look at that, that that's, you know, it moves energy, it moves blocks. If you if you're feeling that meditation would be the greatest way to open those doors up for you creatively, because that's it's going to come. Like you said, it stimulates you and gives you that energy and that what you need to pour it all out. And that's what it's about. Instead yeah. of worrying, it's not going to make it or something or. You know, <laughs> yes. Just, you know, Sometimes I say it's like putting myself on the charger, right? So I'm just plugging myself in my that. charger. Yeah. Yeah. I go on the charger right now. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's good. Yes. Yeah. So is there anything else you would like to leave our audience with before we wrap up for today? Well, I think just to embrace the power of their spirit, you know, the power of who they truly are, just to be open to it every day. If sometimes a simple thought in the morning, you, you open your eyes and, you know, sometimes people just keep going, start going, just take a breath, close them and say, you know, I choose happy. I choose happy. Let ha happiness will always keep you fulfilled in alignment with things and people and things that are for your highest good, just choose happy. The world deserves it because it's not outside of you. It's inside. And once it's inside, you draw from the outside, what will, will what will sustain that? So I think maybe it, it feels that simple just to make a point, to be aware of the power of their own spirit. And, and I choose happy every morning and let it take you, let it take you and love to hear back on that. Absolutely. We'll definitely put your website and how to access your book in the show notes. And just a reminder that if people go and sign up for your newsletter, they do receive that uh, free downloadable meditation, which is really generous of you. Thank you so much for your for your time and sharing so openly and your your energy has just been very positive and and I feel very zen right now. I'm very excited. So thank you so much oh, for well thank for you. I appreciate in. you too and everything you're doing. It's awesome. Thank, thank you. you. All right.